Hey everyone, in this episode we'll be taking a look at Christopher Robin. We're going to explore the story, the beloved character Winnie the Pooh and his friends, and this unique take on the classic story. All that and more in episode 63 of The Realist Podcast. Welcome Team Realist. This is Oscar. I'm Donnie. And we have our producer Ruben. Hello. Or as Donnie established, Pruden. <laughs> <laughs> Pruden. Welcome to this episode. If you're a first time listener, thanks for joining us. If you're a returning listener, welcome back. We really appreciate it. All the support and love. Um, just if I was going to say, I'm going to go into the... <laughs> but if you really care, leave us a comment. <laughs> don't 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 do it if you feel like it's forced. Um, definitely feel free to just uh, show your support always on any of our social media platforms, any of our um, content platforms, iTunes, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, we're on everything. Uh, mm-hmm. You can always send us an email as well if you'd like to. Um, we just love to hear from our fans. <laughs> we're calling fans. I don't know if our, listeners. Like, our listeners. <laughs> our listeners. We might have some fans out there. Right. Some diehard fans. <laughs> Waiting for that one person to be like, are you from Are you from the Realist Podcast? Oh, yeah, Donnie and Oscar from the Realist Podcast. <laughs> Listen to you guys all the time. I've heard all 63 episodes that I've aired. But, um, yes, thank you, everyone, always. And hopefully, if you're a first-time listener, you enjoy this. Um, just in case you're unaware of who we are, we are the Realist Podcast, where we look at films and at certain – well, see, now I'm messing up my our little mission <laughs> statement. It's okay. Where we review films and we look at certain scenes or aspects of a film and – what is it? How they, how they tie into real life. <laughs> I was like, and how they are real? Like, gosh, not today. Yeah, it's all right. All right, it's first right. time listeners, don't listen to this episode. <laughs> Pause it. Listen to another episode that I nailed that. Um, but yes, as Donnie concluded to that mission statement, I guess we're calling it that. I just like, why not? I'm just like, why not? That's what now. I usually call it. Our, our, yeah, our mission statement, I guess. We have <laughs> like we're like a, a charity <laughs> or something. <laughs> our goal is to deliver <laughs> reviews that... That's hilarious. Um, but yes, so we're ready to get to the nitty gritty of the review of Christopher Robin. I, I was going to butcher and say Winnie the Pooh, but that's not what it was called. Um, remember, it's spoiler. So if you haven't seen the movie, you know, do what do. you do. Do what you want to do. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you anymore because I'm like messing up. Uh, but yes, so we're going to go into that content. So Donnie, as always, the first important question of the podcast, mm-hmm. what were your initial thoughts seeing the movie? It was nice. I definitely thought it was going to be a more child-friendly film. Not that it had anything that like was inappropriate for children, right. but I thought it was going to be more geared towards a younger audience. Uh, but then you got to—I guess you got to remember too. I mean, it's it's Christopher Robin as an adult, so it's probably after you know realizing that, and then I'm like, okay, so it's probably not going to be just like this, you know, fluffy like ponies and you know glitter like children's tale like it's going to be a little bit more it's going to appeal to everybody which it did thankfully uh i'm not gonna lie i did not watch winnie the pooh i wasn't really into winnie the pooh as a child i knew of him i knew of his friends and all the characters i'd seen maybe a couple episodes of like the you know the cartoon version that was uh, that was airing when we were children and my sister my older sister nicole loved winnie the pooh so I knew of him because of those things, okay. but I wasn't really super invested in, like, the show, The yeah. Adventures of Winnie the Pooh or whatever. But uh, this film was really good. I think it, you know, for what I did know, I think it's it held true to the characters, um, the voices for sure. I mean, they all sounded, they all nailed the voices, I think, for sure. Well, like, it's a, Pooh, at least, I know for specifically, is a returning from, he's, like, the same person that oh, voiced really? Pooh in the past. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So that makes returned. sense, then, yeah. <laughs> as to why he would nail it. <laughs> Very identical. Um, yeah, I mean, I couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> My God. No, but yeah, it was great. Um, and, you know, Eeyore, sound, I mean, they all sounded great. They you all know, sounded they like, all sounded like how they, yeah. you know, how they are. So that was nice. Uh, and I think it was just a good, it had a good storyline. It had a great message. Basically, uh, 
What was the message? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Wait, I, was it? Well, I had it in words. I mean, basically, the, to, it, to not to pri- to make time for things that are important in life, your family and friendships and making memories, long lasting memories with the people you love and to surround yourself with those people always uh, and to not let, uh, you know, other unimportant things dictate your life. Because at the end of the day, having a great job is amazing and, you know, making an income is great. But you know, that's not going to, like, keep you warm at... I'm, well, I mean, that's that's argumentative. <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> I guess if you could afford a bed and, and heat, <laughs> then it, it will keep you warm at night. But what I mean to say is... You're have a debate with yourself. <laughs> Maybe I should have rehearsed a little bit of this before I started talking. Don't want, <laughs> it. Don't want to get any, like, criticism. Oscar, whatever you got going on is, like, coming on to me now. <laughs> but, yeah, I think it had a great message, and it was a, it was a lovely film. It was nice, and uh, it was good. It was good. Okay. What'd you think? Um, well, I thought this movie was really nice. It was touching to see a kind of follow-up to Christopher Robin. Because um, you always wonder, like, when he grows up, is he going to just forget the toys? It was always... It, it wasn't a, a question that was burning inside, you know, every person that was a Winnie the Pooh fan. But it was nice to kind of get some kind of story of, like, he did lose touch with the characters growing up, which is expected to some extent. Right. Um, and just getting that kind of like conclusion. So if you if you've seen Christopher Robin and, you know, the cartoons before and you kind of can get an idea of like, you know, but he won't forget them because when he grows up, you know, he's going to realize their importance and family and he'll be able to see them with his daughter. Like there's some kind of definitive ending. So it's nice to have that kind of complete picture. Um, but, yeah, a lot of things you covered on. It really it does have that great love of like one, like reflecting on childhood and. You know, seeing how, like, when you're a child, you have this energy, you have this imagination. Uh, but growing up, that doesn't mean that you have to lose it. Those just are the things that come into your life that kind of help it go behind the scenes or go behind that curtain and, and doesn't stay in forefront as when, you know, you have no concerns as a child. So it was good to see that kind of just really come back to, to Christopher um, and really get that full, like, story of, you know, these were my friends. They helped me create this imagination. And it just it continued on. So I really thought that was a nice, complete story for Winnie the Poohs. Um, and he stayed the same. So yeah, that's not a real bear, apparently. <laughs> I remember watching the cartoons, and I always thought that it was like actual, like they were like, and I mean, you know, it's cartoons, so it's kind of tough to like distinguish that it was a, a plush. But I always felt like that it was just like a, a fun version of a real life bear. Like I didn't think it was like a plush. But now that's concluded that it's not. Because I would have been like, wouldn't he be old? Wouldn't have, right? Wouldn't he have been dead? Wouldn't, by right? Wouldn't he have passed <laughs> on? Technically, these animals shouldn't. Don't, don't bears have like shorter <laughs> lifespans than humans? Right. Absolutely. So, in case you haven't been aware of what this movie is, uh, the synopsis by Oscars version, not not by IMDb, not by Google. Oh, look at I'm you! Gonna go, I'm going to spin it off. All right. Do so it. this is the story of Christopher Robin, who reunites with Winnie the Pooh, and must find their friends as Christopher Robin rediscovers. What is important in life? Boom. Mic Simple, drop. to the point. I like it. I like, I like it. We'll go with that. We'll go with that. <laughs> cool. Um, I do want to talk about this because it is something that is kind of like the theme of it. And it's about like childhood toys. Um, how do you, how did you take this in kind of being able to compare it maybe to anything, Donnie? Was there anything that you can kind of reflect and be like, that would be cool if my my stuffed toy that I had or, you know, my specific item that I was a child, you know, to be reunited with that again. Mm-hmm. Um, how, yeah. How does yeah. that? I, of- um, I, I had, so when I was a kid, my favorite show for many years was Arthur, the Aardvark. And I, for Christmas one year, got a plush toy of Arthur nice. and he talked and, it, you know, he said he had a, so he had some phrases. I, I remember all of them, but I won't share all of them. But, um, <laughs> Made it sound like it was almost inappropriate. <laughs> No, that just closed on the real. No, I mean place. it was. It was just. I'll share. I'll, okay, I'll share it. He said, "I, hi, my name is Arthur. Things looked funny before I had glasses. I love my dog Pal. That tickles. <laughs> that was probably an inappropriate no, one. That was. A, <laughs> <laughs> that's Let's a, ride our bikes. That was bikes. a ripoff from Tickle Me Elmo. Let's or ride our would... bikes. That was another one. But anyways, he was. I had this toy and I carried. I have a photo. Like a, a, I'll have to show you guys. I have a photo of, of me with him. A little fat little Donnie. As a kid, with holding my Arthur toy, like squeezing it, I was so happy. But um, Ooh, maybe you could put that on the real podcast. So ah, we could have a reference. Put some like, yeah, right. 
And uh, but it was nice. And oh, I, I Instagram. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify. But gotcha. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I wish. Well, and then I would always obviously I would watch the show too. Yeah. And Arthur had all his friends, Muffy and Buster, Buster and DJ. Binky and DJ was one Francine. Of them. Oh, and no, DJ is not. There was one. no DJ. <laughs> okay. Never DW mind. was his little sister. Oh, there you go. That's what it was. <laughs> but I would always kind of wish that I could like go into their cartoon universe because they were all like nice kids. Especially, I mean, Arthur was just such a nice, wholesome young young guy. And I always just felt like he could be my best friend in real life. And uh, and it, it just always looked like, you know, I think in the show they were in like third grade or something, third or fourth grade, but they kind of seemed a little older. Yeah, uh, maybe I can but see because, that. you know, I was th- that same age. I don't know. But it, it, I just wish that I could have like tagged along on their adventures because they th- did go on all sorts of adventures. And if you read the books, there's, you know, a different adventure for every book. And uh, it made me think about that, like watching this film. Seeing Pooh with all his, you know, friends, it, it made me think of like Arthur and how Arthur in my head was like my childhood friend, and I would like I always kind of wished I could go on their adventures. So that's what I I got I got that comparison while watching this film. Okay, I'm gonna start playing some random reruns throughout the right? house, <laughs> waiting for that one episode I just hit hard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I, I can I could definitely speak on that too because I had my Bugs Bunny, which is right up here. Ah, uh, in he the, is. I'm looking at him the, right now. The world famous recording studio that we do these episodes. Right. In. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I had him. Um, he was the one that I always had my imagination adventures with. I remember, like, I would make him be like whatever we needed to be. It was just like if he was like a, a fighter, if he was um, a martial art ninja. Like, it was just like these random things, um, and it was really just like a, a way for me to just give that outlet of like being creative and thinking of like you know. What can he do now? And I really, I loved that he was just very like flexible. Like he wasn't stiff like an action figure. So you know, it was really easy to just be like, you know, hanging him by one hand, and he's like, you know, trying to survive from the cliff or from the fall and those kinds of things. Um, yeah, and he would he would always be like that one one toy that I needed to bring with me everywhere. Um, then <laughs> started to phase out. So then he started to be getting replaced with like Woody and Buzz. Uh, I so knew you were going to say that. So then they started getting replaced Traitor. by superheroes. So, uh, I mean, it's still one that I – obviously I still have because he's like that original source of like the creative outlet of just like thinking of fun things to do or like ways to just kill time. Um, but, yeah, he really has that that one. And I mean, I'm waiting for him to come to life. If Toy Story's by anything, <laughs> I'm waiting for him to come to life. Right. Have a camera set up waiting to see how – Do you watch Space does. Jam? I did, yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would always see what Bugs Bunny was up to. Yeah. Um, like any shows, cartoons. Uh, I didn't necessarily watch it hardcore. Like I would like have to see it. It's kind of more of just like, oh, it's Bugs. I want to see it. Um, Space Jam was one of them that I watched. I remember they just did a like in 2014 they did a kind of like a, a sitcom on Country Network, mm-hmm. Cartoon Network, and it was just like Daffy and Bugs as roommates, um living together and it was it was a great show it's funny i definitely recommend anyone to go see that show (laughs) but yeah so very similar to that so seeing this one it was really nice um to see that kind of just like thinking back to it now i don't know if maybe i couldn't directly relate because i have like bugs with me so i don't know if that kind of like like oh i grew up out of it because he's still around i don't know if that has anything to do with it right Um, but it was it was interesting to just see the idea of as a kid, you do have this energy. You do have this specific like personality that does change when you grow it's up. It's like a you have like a flame, you know. I think most a lot of children just they just have like a flame, and it just as you mature and develop, it just you know certain things can dim it. Yeah, exactly. More and more, and, and it was um, it's completely relatable too. Like yeah. the, this movie on a realistic level for Christopher Robin was relatable. I mean, maybe not to the extent where everyone goes to, goes to war and goes through like these experiences, but. It did, to me, it did seem like he had to grow up a little bit quicker than than most children have the opportunity to. Mm-hmm. So it was really nice to kind of see that, you know, it just gets lost. It's not that he doesn't want to do those things and then becomes out of habit. So for him to be like cheerful or do something fun with his daughter just felt not normal, which was like a common thing. So most people that, you know, yeah. when you're and a then kid. And it was kind of sad to see, too, like in the beginning of the film, you can kind of see that um, rubbing off on his daughter because now – his daughter, you know, kind of as she's growing up and 
sees her father just working all the time and yeah. achieving to do things. And then she thinks that in order to gain approval from her father, she has to, like, study and read and, you know, be smart, like, have, you know, high intelligence and memorize things, you know, um, and as opposed to, like, just being able to just be a kid and laugh and play. And uh, so it's, like, kind of it kind of seems like she's trying to accelerate her maturity as well, you know, so her right. daughter or so her dad will be approving of her. So that was, like, kind of, you know, it's kind of sad to see. It was. Thankfully, it, it ended on a good note yes but um i think that's something that a lot of people can you know like basically just trying to get like your parents approval that was kind of trying yeah trying to please surprise she just wanted her dad's attention i think that was a very interesting perspective um they didn't go the route where she always had the imagination or she was like the same version as him it was nice to see that it was taken more of a like a hard hit where i mean not to say that you know being an adult is going to rub off onto your kids but they do have that intention to imitate how the parents are so if the parents are always you know arguing and stuff then they get a little bit more on the angry side kind of reaction so it's kind of, yeah. it was nice that that was like a little bit realistic in that manner mm-hmm. um, and the story really did a nice job of balancing like Winnie the Pooh not being too like how do you do the best way to put it like being in the real world didn't seem fake or like in that manner of like it's taking you out like i mean i don't know if it's it was a great choice to choose the the style that they went for for the characters for winnie the pooh and his friends because it did have that like you know this looks like a plush that you can actually buy you mm-hmm. know and it, i think that probably helped but even though when the when pooh talked it, it never came off as like this is this is making it like hard to watch because this would never happen in real life um it was very very nice and well done in terms of that aspect of keeping it still realistic it's just kind of like one of those, it's like, you no, know, maybe these were everyone's individuals that had their own imagination and they thought, you know, he was talking versus like, you know, he was so animated and, you know, he was doing things that were unrealistic. Like he was lifting up cars or whatever, you know, like they, right. they, they had some like realism to it. It was pretty grounded. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was very great done. I think the characters, uh, Winnie the Pooh, I mean, we both seen them. Like, I think we both of them never grew up with them, but we both seen them in, like, just YouTube clips or, you know, little highlights of when they, you know, show Disney movies. So we had a, an idea of who they were, and they stayed like that. That was really nice, too. Like, yeah. you know, they didn't change. And, like, oh, they grew up as well. Tigger doesn't bounce anymore because that's so, like, not a trend anymore. Like, it was still, like, themselves, and they still had that personality. That was really nice to see that it that it kept in. It helped with pushing the story of not to forget you know, I don't know if it was like, don't forget your old friends either. <laughs> don't, you know, it's not about new friends. It's about your old friends. I, I guess it's just like, don't forget. I mean, it's, these it's, special, like, don't, don't let distance and time separate you from people who have really made like a positive mark on your life. Like, you yeah. know, and like, don't let the, don't let friendships fizzle out just because you're getting caught up with work or you're busy. Like make time to always stay connected and, and stay in each other's lives. I don't know, and I, I'm, I would have to do, like, research this, but I believe there was, and I'm not sure if it was how the classic books were or how the Disney, or I don't think that Disney interpretations, but that it was always Christopher Robin's imagination. That the char- These characters weren't, weren't actually plush. They were always just his imagination. Like they weren't real. Yeah, so it was kind of that. That would have been interesting if that was the angle they did. They did not. They they kept them straight as like these actual. Like they really lit like are alive. Yeah, and so in the cool. hundred acre woods. Hundred acre woods. Yeah. That is only accessible through the tree. Yeah. Which that was probably the one thing that I was trying to see if they were gonna really kind of give a full understanding of, of like oh maybe this is still just their imagination. But they kind of made it seem like they did leave their their town to go to the hundred acre woods. Which it's kind of just like, are we going with this is like a real thing? Or is this still like their like imagination? Because I could see where Christopher Robin named this like forest that he was living next to as like, oh, this is the Hundred Acre Woods and this is where Winnie the Pooh friends live. But this was like a little, like a literal like dimension, <laughs> like, a, like yeah. a whole nother world. Uh, so it's kind of one of those. It's like, well, is there anyone else in this world? I mean, they, they try to say the Huffalumps um, were were there and they were evil Mm -hmm. but it it always and then it always played off as like it was christopher robin's imagination that was making these you know seem real and that we need the people were really terrified of because there was nothing like nothing horrific like that we saw yeah like there's no like dead stuffed plush toys or anything like that so yeah i mean i don't know i guess i just kind of 
And it, I guess I don't really think about it too hard. <laughs> I'm like, it, just, okay. it, it didn't give that kind of answer, I guess, would be a, a, in a good one. So it's we don't know whether this is still like his imagination and that his family finally saw it. But then they came to the real world. Yeah. I mean, but they went to the at the end. They went to. They the all went, yeah. Wood, so that and so, so it, and that's why I'm like thinking it is a. But is it only one that's successful? Maybe by it's only yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe only like he can you know open the portal or you know. Or so whatever. I think maybe that's probably the one thing. Maybe that, if somebody else tries to like walk through that, open the door on the tree, like it won't open. So or no something. one can just go in and grab Pooh and you know take him and <laughs> kidnap yeah, him. Like, like, I think it's only like it's a world that was created with you know Christopher Robin obviously and Pooh and his friends and only they can ex- access it. Which is interesting. Which, But they just never clarified. I think that's probably right. like the one thing that, that still is like wait a minute. Like I can I don't understand if you know Pooh was actually a stuffed you know animal or if it was Christopher Robin's imagination. That's why he re- you know was reimagined but uh, very interesting. But I mean I like the touches. Um, if you watched any of the Disney cartoons of Winnie the Pooh, there's a lot of like little homage to him. Um, like when he woke up from his bed and he had his like PJs on, um, yeah. when he did his exercises, um, and his love for honey, a lot of those classic things. So that was really nice. I will say the scenes when he was eating honey and like it was getting all over the place, that was like, I was kind of cringing. Why? Because you just know how sticky honey is and he was getting it. And he looked like he was made of fabric already, you know. Yeah. So it's like the honey dripping on down his like on his arms and on, and then him stepping on his foot, stepping in it, and then him like walking everywhere all through the house, Christopher <laughs> Robin's house. I'm just like, ah, oh, you're making a mess, poo. You're getting sticky honey everywhere. At this point, if that was Donnie, Donnie would be like, I don't even want you anymore. I get I'd like, out. I'd like pick him up and put him in the sink. I'd be like, stay here. Wait, we're gonna wash all this honey off. Oh, that's funny. But that's hilarious. But yeah, I, I really feel like this character, I mean, this show, this show, now I'm naming everything. Uh, this movie <laughs> did a great job delivering these characters that we love. If you love the Disney uh, interpretation of the characters, you will still fall in love with them. It's kind of like a follow-up. It's kind of a Toy Story 3-esque kind of thing where you see them years later and they, they're they still themselves and you still feel that connection. We're growing up, but they're not kind of right. uh, mo- emotions you probably will feel. So how, what did you think of the performance by... Um, the actor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say his name. I know he's gonna butcher. It's E. Erwin Mc, McGregor. Ewan McGregor. McGregor. Is it Ewan? Is it Ewan? I think it's Ewan. E- Ewan. E- Ian. Ewan. Maybe. Ewan. No, because it's a W. E- Ewan. Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. Not Do McGregor. you know how to say it, producer? Producer. <laughs> no. Okay. Producer, look into it. We'll call him E. McGregor. No. <laughs> e. McGregor. <laughs> but yes, yes. I thought he did. A, I thought it was good. I think he had a um. I think he had a kind of like a sternness to him that you could believe that he just got caught up so caught up in his work life that he lost all the spark and the imagination and the creativity. Maybe he didn't lose it, but it just got it got it, you know, it died down, it fizzled out a little bit. So he had that, you know, the seriousness tone to him. But then in the in the scenes when he was interacting with Pooh and going back to the Hundred Acre Woods, he also there was also some some liveliness there, you know, something brewing behind his eyes, and or and sort of a, an innocence that came back out. So I think he did really good at capturing the two moods of Christopher Robin, you know, kind of taking it back to like how Christopher Robin might be as a kid and then yes. and as an adult. I think he did a really good job with that. I will say, I wouldn't necessarily establish that this was Christopher Robin, so to speak. Um, and I don't, and I don't say that in the sense that he didn't portray the character well or the uh, the moods, as you said. Uh, but I feel like this Christopher Robin is a character that is is more so a personality than an actual character. Uh, very different than a lot of characters that you know you 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 can see. Like I just felt like this was one where you don't have to label this Christopher Robin, but you still get the same movie. Um, the only reason why it is labeled that is because that was the boy that was associated with Winnie the Pooh. Um, but if you like removed that element out of it, and you just said this was another boy that played with Winnie the Pooh characters, um, it still probably would deliver that same message and still have those same emotions. Um, but I will say, like, I, I never felt like he was Christopher Robin, and that's not a bad thing in the way that I don't think there is a character that is Christopher Robin. There's well, no... I mean, he's grown, so it's like it's not like we have a well, not even visually. Like, like I could see that, you know. That that's that's fine, I'm, but it's not like even a visual. It's just more of like I, I don't feel like Christopher Robin can ever be 
a character that you can play on screen. I feel like it's always a personality that you you take, and that that you don't think that anyone could ever play Christopher Robin on screen. Not like no, I don't think so. Like not in the like visually sure. Like you can get a a young actor that looks like him, or you know, as like as an adult. But I I never I I don't feel like you know if you changed his name, and you said this was you know, Bobby, Bobby Pigeon. I don't know. (laughs) It's a terrible. (laughs) Try to keep the the bird at the end. You know, maybe not that name. Maybe more a little bit more attractive name. Bobby McIntyre. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know where that came from. But um, but like I feel like that that would still deliver the same message. And, and that, again, this is not to say that no one can play this Christopher Robin character. I just feel like it's not. There's not much to Christopher Robin because he was always just the human that was nice to Winnie and his friend. Winnie and his friend. There you go. I'm saying <laughs> skipping the poo. Winnie the Pooh and his friends. Um, but he just never had that like trait, like, and and it's just one of those. It's fine, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, he's not like an Annie that has this definitive, you know, characteristic trait that you can describe as. I feel like Christopher Robin was always just more that kind of like type of. This is just a boy, a boy that has imagination and is and is cheerful with his friends. And I feel like that. That's what I mean by that. Not saying like, of course, if there was like a series or you know if you know, one care actor played this character for multiple films, then you probably would be like, okay, that's how I imagine Christopher Robin now. But just in like a one-off, I don't feel like there's a, a way to portray Christopher Robin but outside of looks. So it, it's just one of the things I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah. It was just like an observation gotcha. I made that, you know, to me, this was the actor portraying Christopher Robin, but I felt like he, he nailed the personality exactly of what I would expect as an adult for Christopher Robin and, you know, when he was a ch- – well, the actor that was playing him as a child. But that was just like a little, little observation I made. Not a critique, just an observation. Gotcha. Check out my full analysis on oh my, my book God. that I'm my full, my full character <laughs> breakdown. <laughs> Called Christopher Robin, real or not? <laughs> um, but, yeah, so that was it. Was there a particular scene that you enjoyed, Donnie, from – yeah, I mean, it was they, there were some good moments through you know throughout the whole film. I really, I mean, obviously, this is like an obvious one, I know, but um, in the end, when he when he goes to the to back to his work and he pitches the new idea of basically let's make suitcases more accessible, more a cheap, more affordable for everyone, yeah. as opposed to just making a higher end, you know, expensive suitcase because now. Oh, and to let all his employees go on vacation. Yep. And at first it sounds crazy. It's like the birth of like vacations for her. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> for business. <laughs> but then after his explanation of it, it made sense. And then the fact that his, the the basically the, the owner of the, yeah, company, the, owner the CEO of the, company. of the company was on board and was like, that makes sense. Let's do it. And it was like, yay. And then, you know, he was like, but first I'm going to spend some time with my family. Yeah, you know, and it was like you know, kind of a storybook ending. But hey, we're dealing with like a storybook, uh, you know, uh, we're dealing with a storybook. Message, yeah. We're dealing with literally a storybook, right? That was a nice, um, nice visuals too. Not so, to mention, yeah, it was. It was that, and it, and it just leaves you feeling good and and like optimistic and hopeful and like yay, you know, on a great note. Which is exactly how I was expecting to leave this film. Not. On like a dire end, or like, like when he sacrifice, when he the sacrifices, yeah, like, so, yeah, right. He like throws himself into like a burning freaking flame, so they they can stay warm and live like on. That. Yeah, <laughs> like no, uh, <laughs> heck no. This better be like fairy tale ending kind of. Um, but it was, it was nice, and I really liked it, and I got I, you know, that's what I liked. So I I will say my favorite scenes were with Eeyore, and I probably have a, a personal attachment to Eeyore more than the other characters just because my mom's no, a big fan. No, you're not probably. You do have a personal oh my attachment gosh. more to Eeyore. He's just, uh, he's just a character that's been, you know, very close to me, I guess, now within time that she always, like, wants every Eeyore merchandise. I'm sure she's going to want this one. I'm sure she has this one already, probably. Maybe. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, so it's one of those that, that like, him, seeing on him on screen was me getting the joy. And not to say that, you know, his personality is, like... Let me stop you there, okay? You love his personality. No, like, no, no, I'm, I'm saying, like, it's... You, I'm you saying, like, like I'm not pessimism. saying that that's, that's a good person. Like, it's not like I'm saying, like, everyone should be like no, Eeyore, but, but that's it's just, like... why a, you like him, because he's, like... It's just that down, Debbie like, Downer, negative Nancy. Yeah. I just love it. It's just so fun. He had, he did have one of my favorite lines in the film. You know which one I'm talking oh, about. Oh, the one when he fell? When he fell on the ground, and he said, this is where I belong. That's that was like yeah. such so funny. 
Yeah, that's probably like one of my favorite. I, lines. I'm really glad that definitely ca- captured his essence of the yeah. essence of Eeyore. Exactly. Um, I'm really glad that he they had a big scene with Christopher Robin. I, I feared he was going to be kind of like just there and more of appearance. And you kind of get that with Piglet. Tigger kind of gets a little bit more on screen time, but Piglet had like very little to do in this movie. So and the owl too, and the owl and Kanga and Rue. Yeah, mm-hmm. they definitely had and the rabbit and. Let's just talk about rabbit and kangaroo. <laughs> How the names are so so original, um, but yeah, no, those those were definitely characters that were sidelined, and that's unfortunate. Uh, I get that this was all about you know the human adult Christopher Robin and that kind, um, but it would have been nice if he would have had like a special moment with each character. That would have been a nice little touch. Yeah. Um, I know that they were like later in the in the series that like, they weren't like initially like part of the original creation, and it was always. Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Piglet, and Eeyore. I get like that was like the original four, or whatever, yeah. sort of speak. But the full fathom four. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yeah, all all of Eeyore scenes were just like pure delight to see because like, it's exactly what I wanted him to just be like the, you know, oh I know you forgot about me. It's not surprising. Yeah. Don't worry. Let me just drown. Like let me <laughs> let me just leave me die in the river. <laughs> it's appropriate, but I like that. I love it. Very fun. Um. Yes. So with that being said, Donnie, what is your score on Christopher Robin? Um, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. Okay. I thought it was a really nice film. Uh, I like that it's appealing to everyone, even though, like I said, I thought it was going to be more marketed towards like kids. Um, but it was really something that like, uh, you know, we obviously we're not kids. We don't have kids and we saw it and it felt like <laughs> saw Peter Rabbit. It didn't, it didn't feel saw. like I know it didn't feel like I, you know, I was like being patronized or anything. It didn't feel like I was, they were trying to like sell me this cheesy little kids film. Like I felt like I could really it was relatable, you know, especially being as adults and relating to Christopher Robin. It really was. So I really liked it. And uh, I thought it just told it had a great message. And um, I think they captured, you know, the the child the child story like the ch- the childhood story part of it with Pooh and all his friends um and then they captured the very like adult side of it so i think you got kind of the best of both worlds and I, it was solid it was nice um it did i'm not gonna lie i mean i i nodded off like one time because um well i was tired but the 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 pay the, the it's not like there's a, a ton of things going on in the film that like keep you so alert it's calm, you know relaxed, it's a very yeah. calm even the way they i mean even the way everyone speaks and like nobody's like really screaming or yelling and there's poo. no like dramatic character there's no super yeah. climactic scene where it's like you know oh my god Winnie the Pooh has to sacrifice himself yeah like <laughs> Winnie the Pooh's not sacrificing himself or anything it's more of you're just going on like this nice little adventure through the hundred acre woods and um and, Pooh, and, and just like that and that rhythm and that yeah <laughs> exactly like... and Pooh has just a soothing you know and he speaks very slowly and lightly and so that was putting me to sleep a little bit i'm not gonna lie it was a bedtime story <laughs> um, I, and i told you when we were in the car i said i wish i wish we had seen this film like earlier in the day like i would have been you know, I, I mean, I was into it, but I feel like I would have been more into it and not yeah. prone to like falling asleep. So, um, if you're not into like a kind of calm, nice story, and if you if you feel like you you're an, an action buff and you need like suspense and thrills and climax to like keep you interested, this might not be the film for you. Yeah, it's definitely not a fun energy child film like kids film like Peter Rabbit um, or a lot of those um, animations that that have that kind of high energy. Um, Teen Titans Go is like another one. Like it, it's it really isn't necessarily set for kids to just go all out laughing and you know having a good time. Yeah, it's more. It is one more of a of the calm story about. I mean, it's. I think I feel like it's made for adults, but it appeals to kids because these these characters are are timeless. Yeah. So they they just have that you know appeal of like oh look it's a well it starts off with it's a plush toy, and then you start to see their personalities. Um, and so it's, it just becomes that kind of like connection of like, oh, you know, I, I'm so happy like Tigger. I like Tigger because he's happy or I like Pooey because he's always like honey. You know, it's like has that kind of standard of kids appeal right. for sure. Um, yes. Were you are you going to did you have more? No, I think that was okay. it. What do you give it? Uh, I'm going to give it a four, four out of five. Oh, I thought it was a really nice, nice story. The one thing that I, I probably would say is the reason why I'm giving it. Um, the four instead of like a perfect score or anything like that would be just because it didn't really establish whether these characters were only, you know, for Christopher Robin. I mean, I know Winnie the Pooh became real in, in this, in the city and like people saw him and kind of like took a second look. 
but it, it just felt like it never established where this is was like this was Christopher Robin's toy specifically because he can communicate with it like I just felt like it would have been nice to have that kind of conclusion even if it was just like oh this was always his imagination or something that just kind of defined so like if Winnie the Pooh got abandoned by Christopher Robin in the city would you know would the next person that find Winnie the Pooh would it be able to talk to it would it become like a whole thing where Winnie the Pooh can stay in this real life can he you know what if he never goes back to the Hundred Acre Wood? Would he be able to survive? Right. So it was kind of just that thing that if they're going to go with that route of Winnie the Pooh coming to us, I felt like they should have kind of just defined it. It would have been fine if he would have stayed, like Christopher Robin stayed in the Hundred Acre Wood and the whole story took place there. That would have been nice as well. But I kind of tried to blend in both and I felt like the blend didn't go as well as it should have. Okay. So, uh, but yeah, and I mean, the pacing is slow, but that's kind of just the way they wanted it to be. It wasn't like, you know... They they were trying to throw an action sequence. Right, actually, was, I mean, was, yeah, they knew they knew yeah. what kind of film they wanted to make. Exactly, so. and that was that was really and nice. That's fine. Uh, the characters were really well done. Um, I feel like they all were performed exactly how I was expected. Christopher Robin brought in that that realistic approach of like how you would become an adult when you have you know from a child to loving these toys to become an adult, where you still recognize them and you still like oh I remember when we you know when I drew these characters when I was five and they show that in the film. So a lot of nice things about it. Um, I mean, if your kid has that, like, energy and, you know, wants to, you know, run around and stuff like that, then this movie might not match that kind of energy. But if your kid is just interested in seeing Winnie the Pooh or these characters, it's definitely still worth the watch because you get exactly, you get 100% of those personalities in this movie. So, yep. yeah, I definitely will will recommend it always to see that. It was just a nice conclusion. Or if you're, especially if you're a big Winnie the Pooh fan, this probably will, will connect with you a lot more. Uh, just because you'll see these characters and you probably think of like, oh, I remember when I was a child and I had, you know, my Eeyore or, you know, whatever character you enjoyed. So, yeah, four out of five would be my my score for this one. So, okay. hopefully everyone, that was uh, a score similar to yours or maybe you guys have a different score. We definitely would love to hear your feedback. You can always share with us as always. Um, but thank you again for listening to this episode. And we hope you enjoyed it. And Thanks, we'll guys. See you again next time. We'll see you next time.